All right, today we're gonna be talking about ways to stabilize the camera to keep it from jittering and jerking around. And I'm gonna show you all the different ways from really cheap to really expensive. And yes, I'm gonna be giving them most of this stuff away by the end of the video. Um, but first I'm gonna talk about stabilizing itself because people think there's some misconceptions. They think that the IBIS, the in-camera stabilizing systems are going to be so good soon that you're not gonna need any of this stuff, that you don't need gimbals or any of the physical things. Let's start with a little brief explanation of stabilizing. Now, the lens is going to focus light onto a sensor, a flat plane. So the sensor is going to get a picture. That picture is basically a two-dimensional image. What people think is gonna happen is the stabilizer, because you're jerking around like this, right? Well, they think that the sensor is going to move to compensate for that. The way that the camera does that is it has to crop in. So here's your sensor, it has to crop in, and then it has to move that around within that space. It needs room to work with. So when it does this, it's actually, you're cutting off a lot of the resolution. You're getting in tighter, you're losing your wide angles, and you're losing resolution. Now, this only works for two-dimensional images which is not really gonna work for a lot of situations because the world out there is three-dimensional. So let me show you that. So here's a, here's a scene, right? We got some mountains, a tree, this landscape, and here's you. All right, so we think of uh, an image in a movie camera or a still camera being like this. It's just an image and it's just moving around, the camera's gonna stabilize it, but that's not the case because you are separate from the background. So. As you're moving around, you're moving in 3D space. So notice how this is moving separate from this. And as this moves, you're going to be hiding and revealing certain parts of the background. Now the camera has no idea what's behind you and un unless it has another way of seeing through you, it's not gonna know what to put in the place to stabilize this. And that's the trick. Now, unless you had, the only way to make that possible is if the camera has multiple lenses. If there's like four lenses, uh, two for up and down and two for left and right, then it can see around the side and interpolate that. And that's gonna, that's basically like having four cameras with four sensors packed into one. And that's really expensive. And the processing speeds to be able to do that just don't exist. So for now, you're gonna need these mechanical things to make this move separate from this because otherwise what, the, what your, your software is gonna do is either stabilize the background and this moves around, or this is stable and the background moves. But if you're moving in 3D space up and down, there's no way to make both go at the same time unless you use one of these things. So I, I hope that kind of explained a little bit the stabilizing principles. Now, the only way to really have a really good stabilizing where everything is nice and smooth is if the camera itself stays in position and you might be jerking a bit, but the camera stays really well and it doesn't go up and down. Now, there's different kinds of motion. One last thing here. People think stabilizing motion is just like this. That's a flat plane, but it also goes forward and back and up and down. Now, here's a, um, one type of motion, here's another type of motion, here's a type of motion, and here's a type of motion. The, now, what the camera can fix is this, we're on the flat plane, and maybe a little bit of this or this, but it has a really hard time if you're walking and the thing is going up and down or left and right. That's where these things come in. And using 120 frames per second to smooth out motion doesn't work when someone's talking. All right, so let's start with the most basic stabilizing method of all. And that is just holding the camera in your hand, just walking around and being really stable. It is possible with enough practice to be able to learn how to walk and stabilize yourself without moving the camera very much. And there actually are people who do that. There's a guy who has a channel, Mark Bone. He only uses a camera in his hand and sometimes he uses a handle like this. This is a handle and he just attaches it on top of the camera and you walk around. The heavier the camera, the more stable it is. The lighter the camera, the easier it is to jiggle. Having a handle mounted on top of your camera is the first cheapest way to stabilize a camera. Now, the other way is to just cup it with the bottom of your hand and walk around like this. 
So that's the cheapest way of all. And if, with practice, you can get really good at this. Now I know everybody wants to have something where they just attach to something, push the on button, and it instantly locks the camera and makes it really stable. And I think that's what these things do, the gimbals, to some degree, but there's still some issues with that, and I'll get to that in a minute. So here's the first step. These handles that you put on top, they, they go for, it's called a top handle. There's different versions of them. You get them for like 25 bucks. I'll put the links down below. So the next step up from that is this thing here. This is, um, this is an X-Grip. Uh, it's a really lightweight, plasticky thing that you stick your camera onto, and you can walk it like this. You know, like, or you can turn the camera like that, which is, you know, it's different ways of doing it. So well, whatever it is you're doing, you know, you could walk with this like, which is kind of cool. I mean, that's one way of doing it. This thing is 15 bucks. It costs almost nothing. That's kind of cool. Here's the next step up from that. This is the Velo Action Pan Pro VB2000. It costs $30 and you can hold it with two hands. So now you can go like this and you can make it fly. Like, you know how little kids go with airplanes. <laughs> You can fly around like that. Um, so this is kind of cool. Very lightweight. It weighs nothing. It weighs, it's very, very lightweight. 30 bucks for this thing. The next step up is a uh, Revo SR1000. You put it on your shoulder. $89 at B&H. Uh, this is kind of what the news guys used to use when they went around town to shoot the news and they have a big video camera on there, have it on their shoulders. And you walk, and this is good because you can put your eyepiece there to look at it. Now, the problem with this is, as you're walking, your shoulder activity is going to transfer through into this, but it helps stabilize, and it helps the weight a little bit. It just helps in some areas. It doesn't make it totally smooth, but it helps a little bit. Um, it's the next step up from uh, having nothing. The next step up from that, this one's kind of cool. This is a DSLR rig. It's only $35. It's by Neewer. And it, it, it moves in so many directions. And there's so many, this, everything about this, like you can turn the handles in a million different ways. <laughs> it's so um, versatile to use for so many things. But the general idea is, just like the, uh, the, the previous one I showed you, you put this on your shoulder like this. This is the most basic way, and you stabilize it like that. And of course, you can make the handles like this. <laughs> so that's another way to do it. Or you could just take this bottom thing out completely. You could collapse these in, and then just use the handle like that. There's so many ways you can configure this thing. It's just so fun to play with. If nothing else, it's just fun. Even though this is on your shoulder, if you walk, it's still gonna bounce up and down. This is not really a stabilizing device very much as it is something that just makes it easier to work the camera. This does not take the shake out of, you still have to learn to walk properly and move the camera properly. So that's the DSLR rig, $35, lightweight. It's kind of fun. And the next one up from that is, it's called a spider stabilizer. This one's kind of cool. Now we're starting to use uh, weights and balances and things like that. This is flat, the, the handles are flexible. You can use your thumb on here to actually push it up or you know turn it if you want to go up or down. And this is a little bit more versatile than the previous one that I showed you because it's using the weight of the camera to balance and it's a little bit smoother, and you adjust it, and that's kind of cool. I got it from China, it's $95, which is pretty cheap for what this is. No motors, no gimbals, no, I mean it has a gimbals, but there's no motorized um, gyros in this. This is all just weights and things, which is kind of cool, I mean, it's, it's a cool thing. All right, now we move up to the last of the mechanical ones, and that is this. This is the standard, main one that most people use. It takes some getting used to, but the idea is you balance the camera perfectly with the counterweights down here. And if it's balanced properly, and you have a gimbal here, and you, you move it, you keep it, uh, whatever you want to aim it at with this hand here, and then you can move the camera in whichever direction 
and the camera aims. It doesn't move at all. The camera just stays looking in the direction that you want. And you can turn it easily by just, of course, you have to keep it balanced like that. This is actually a good one. This is the Flycam Red King. I suggest this one if this is the way you want to go. Instead of just unlocking the base plate and manually sliding and jerking it and then locking it in, hoping it works, there's a knob on the back and a knob on the side. You just turn the knob and it makes the camera go back, 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 or forward, forward, forward. And there's another knob on the side. You turn, makes the camera go sideways. So you can really dial in the, the weights perfectly. This thing here also goes up and down the gimbal, you put the right position in there, and then these weights can go up and down. The, the higher up it goes, the less weight on the bottom you have, and then you add weights down here. Most people think you have to have the exact amount of weight of the camera on the plates down below. You really don't. You can have less weight down here, and then you just make this longer, which adds more weight according to the camera. The way you balance these things, I'm just gonna give you a real quick course so it's leaning forward a little bit. Now you gotta remember, oh, it's got the lens cap on. Lens cap makes a big difference on the weights. So you take the lens cap off, now it's starting to lean to the back. That's how much weight the lens cap adds. So now you turn this dial until it's, yeah, that's about good. All right, so now you have this, and the way you, you counterbalance the top and the bottom is you hold it sideways, and you count two and a half seconds before it gets into this position. So you go like this, 1,001, 1,002, there, that's perfect. So that's the right amount of distance up and down in here to get it balanced right. And once you got it dialed in, you know, again, you, you can have your motion. This is the best way to um, physically stabilize something without any motors or gyros. It's very popular. It's, this is the Red King Fly Cam by ProAim. It's $230. I highly recommend this if you're gonna go the manual route. This stabilizes better than all of these things. And um, this is what you attach to that, the steady cam. This is the, uh, the main part of the steady cam that does the stabilizing. I'll get all to that in a minute. Anyway, so this is uh, the last of the manual mechanical stabilizers. Now we're going to get to the motorized electrical ones. These are handheld gyros. You put your camera in here and it has XYZ motors that stabilize it. You have to balance it properly. I'm not going to show you how to do it, but basically you have to balance the camera this way, this way, and this way. And then the motors take over and it hold it steady. Unlike other people which nitpick these things apart, which was this one better than this one, you know what? They're almost all pretty much the same. Maybe $50 more, $100 more or less. One might weigh a little bit more, whatever, but really they're all kind of the same if you know how to use them. I'm sure you've already seen a million videos about these online. I've got three different models here. I've got the Fiutech AK4000, $400. I've got the Zhiyun Crane 2, which is $450. And then I have the Ronin SC made by DJI. I like this one because this one is smaller, very well made, very good quality lot of features and it's the cheapest one it's only 350 dollars so i highly recommend now if you're going to go this route the ronin sc it's the smallest of the bunch the best made of the bunch and the thing about the ronin sc is uh if you hook up a cell phone on top of your camera it can actually track your motions i'll get into that in the next video on tracking this one's about stabilizing and the fiutech ak4000 also has an optional two-handed grip here it's a carbon fiber grip. Um, it costs $190. I'm going to turn it on. The thing is, you take the handle off the bottom of this and you put it in, you incorporate it into this handle. This is where the, the, the electronics and the batteries are. And it goes, the, the wires go through here and talks to this thing. So I'm going to turn it on. Okay, it's on now. And now it's got a little LCD screen here that you can change for whatever mode you want. And now you can do smooth motions up and down. So if you're using the uh, carbon fiber handle and the AK4000 together, it's about $600 for the whole set. And it's pretty good. I mean, it works all right. Personally, from my experience, having the two handle thing doesn't really make it smoother than just having the single handed one. 
especially if you know what you're doing. But, you know, you're having two hands hold it instead of one, so you're cutting the weight that you're holding, your weight bearing, is now split up over two hands instead of one hand just holding it and getting all jerky and, and worn down. Um, so, so that's something to consider. All right, so now we have, that. these are the motorized ones, and it's, it's not, I mean, it does help. You turn it on and it, it makes it smoother, but it's still not going to make it perfectly locked in smooth because you're still, if you're walking, if this is going up and down while you're walking, this cannot compensate for this. It can compensate for that, 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 a little bit of this, not much, and a little bit of this, but mainly the rotating on the axis stuff is what these things stabilize. All right, and this is the next step up from this. This is a two-handled version, and I like this one. This is a Ronin DGI, what is it? M, this is a Ronin M. <laughs> uh, this one I like the best out of the motorized ones. Uh, I think it actually is a lot more stable than these, and I'm gonna turn it on for a second here. Oh, it wants to go that way, okay. So it's on. So now you can do really smooth motions with this thing. I like this one out of all the motorized ones. This is the one I like the most. So this is the Ronin M. It's a two-handle gimbal stabilizer. It goes for $800 and I really like it. It's one of my favorite ones. And this is the one that I use for hanging off of that one. Now we're talking about professional steady camps. This is the professional steady camp system uh, basis that Hollywood has been using for many years. So the way this works is this is the support system and this is the steadying system. And this goes on a pin. So this is the final system here like this. Now contrary to popular belief, this is not for steadying. This does not really steady anything. The purpose of this right here is to take the weight of this off your arms. In Hollywood, those cameras are huge, they're heavy, and they're big, and they have monitors and big batteries, and I think a normal person probably couldn't hold it for more than 30 seconds without shaking like crazy. Anyway, so this thing here, the whole purpose of this is to support the weight of the steadying contraption. So this is how it works. And really what makes things steady more than anything else is the weight of the camera, the weight of the gear. Everybody thinks this does the steadying, it doesn't. The reason the Hollywood shots are so steady is because they use these big giant heavy cameras with big heavy gear and monitors and batteries. You can take a little tiny object and shake it really easily, really quickly. But if you go up to an ocean liner and you push on it, it's not going anywhere because the bigger something is, the more it wants to stay where it is because of all the heavy weight. It's called inertia, momentum. Uh, heavy things want to stay where they are. So it's a lot easier to have smooth motion with heavier objects. A car is actually a really good stabilizing system. Anyway, so what does the stabilizing more than anything is the heavy weight of, of a camera. And this just does the support. So you can use this all day long and not have your arms get tired. So that's really what this is for. And the stuff, the real quote unquote city cam, the brand city cam, they go up to like the price of a house, like a quarter million dollars for those things. They, the newer ones have gyros on them and, and stable uh, motors and everything. Um, but the basic ones for the first 20, 30 years they made uh, city cams, it was just counterweights, that's all it is, which is what this is. Um, this system here with the arm, the vest and the fly cam Red King, isn't really that expensive at all. The vest itself, the Flycam Galaxy, is only $385. That's with the arm, only $385. That's less than the price of most little handheld gimbals. The Flycam Red King is only $230. So for six, $700, you got yourself a professional Steadicam. Now, I know it's big and awkward and everything, but if you're going to be doing stuff all day long and your cameras are heavier and bigger, this is something to consider. And you got to adjust the springs for how heavy the camera is. So anyway, so this is this system here. 
Oh, and one word of caution, if you have one of these things, when you take this off and this arm is free, be real careful because it swings around like really easily. It could whack you in the head or whack someone else in the head. Be really careful. Now the arm comes out like this, but it still swings around. This thing is dangerous and it's real heavy and it's hard. So be careful if you have one of these, be real careful of that. Now this one keep supports the weight from below. This one supports the weight from above. All right, this one here is called the Flycam Flowline by ProAim uh, with a placid spring head. This costs about $800. The last one I showed you, it supports from underneath but with an arm. This one supports from above, which is what I use more of because I do recipe videos and I have to fly the camera just an inch above the countertop. So this is more fitting for what I do. For people who follow people around walking, maybe the other one is more fitting. So it depends what you use it for would be determining which one is more right for you. Anyway, so you hang your camera from here. And again, th this thing is just like the other one is not designed to steady the camera. All this does is it's designed to take the weight off your arms so your arms don't get tired holding something. That's all this is. It's just a holding device to keep the weight off you. If you walk, it's still it still goes up and down. So you need something on here that stabilizes. So that's where I use the Ronin M. So it has a clamp on here that you then clamp on the handle. So now you have your gyroscopic gimbal dangling from a wire above your head. My arms don't even have to do anything, but they're there to guide it. So I'm going to turn this on. There. So now I can concentrate all my energy on where to aim the camera and just doing, you know, more creative stuff rather than spending all my energy having to hold this thing up and my arms go get tired all day. You know, after a while, your arms get tired and start shaking. My arms are all I'm doing with my arms, is just aiming the camera. I can do this with one finger if I wanted to. So this is a lot easier for if you're filming all day long. Now, again, if you're walking, you know, and you're walking, you're, you're going up and down. So see, the whole thing is going up and down. All this can do is stabilize this way, but it cannot stable. This spring might help a little bit, but again, you got to learn how to walk properly, heel to toe, heel to toe, barely moving as you're barely go, not, you know, to minimize the up and down motion. So again, just because you've got this big fancy device with all these gizmos and motors and everything, you're still going to get some shake. If you're, <laughs> if you don't learn how to walk properly, you still have to be a proper operator. This does not answer all your problems, but it does take a lot of the weight off your arms and this helps stabilize from the, the three axes right on the sensor. So now you can do some nice smooth motions. This is one of my favorite setups for doing kitchen uh, recipe videos because this thing can now float inches above the surface of the countertop and there's nothing underneath. I can lean over top of tabletops and do, and, and I can aim it down and I can aim it up. Nice smooth motions. All right, so again, the Ronin M is $800 and the Flycam flow line with the placid flow head is $800. So this is a $1,600 setup here. But for what I do in the kitchen videos, other than using a uh, actual jib arm, motorized jib arm, I think this is for hand holding the best smoothest thing for what I do. Now everybody's different, everybody does different things. If you're following people walking around, you could use this, but maybe the, uh, the actual Steadicam, the, the Galaxy one is better for you. So again, it's for each his own. The way to take this off, you just push this lever here and it comes off that easy. And then you just put this on the stand. And the thing about these big things here is, uh, my arm's already getting tired just holding this like this. That's what these things are for. So I don't have to hold this with my arm. The thing about these big things are, I mean, it's pretty obvious. It's awkward. It's big. Putting it on and off is not that easy. So there is a downside to it. I like small lightweight things, but 
some, if you're going to be doing videos for hours and hours, this might be something to consider. Everybody thinks these things are going to make your life easier. It's going to make things smoother. They really don't. The reason I'm not showing you what the movements are like with each one of these recording a video is because if you just took one of these things and you walked around with it, it's going to be kind of jerky. You're going to see the footsteps every time you hit the ground. Even if you're walking heel to toe like you're supposed to do, you're still going to see some of this. You got to, it, it takes practice. Even with the real steady cam, it takes practice. It takes weeks or months to really get it down, to really get good at it. So none of these are going to give you perfect smooth motion. The real trick is how heavy is the camera and how uh, practiced are you at doing it? It takes a lot of practice to get it to be really smooth. So that's kind of something you got to realize. You're not going to get smooth motion by taking it out of the box, pushing the on button instantly. Everything's wonderful. You need to practice. You need to really work at it. And over time, over months and months, you will learn how to walk, how to move your body, how to do everything. This is not instant stuff. So I don't need all of this stuff. It's too big. It's too heavy. TDB is just too damn big. <laughs> so I like small, lightweight things and uh, I'd like to play with stuff. I like to see what the, what it's like, see what all the hype is. And uh, so I'm just going to give most of it away because I just don't need all of it. I really don't. I just like to know what it's like. So here's what I'm going to give away. All right. And the way we're going to do it, go to MarcusFixFreebies.com to see the rules. You can't have won anything in the last six months. Pick one of these. Pick one that you want. Do not send in multiple entries. Anybody who is the, does that, who sends me an entry for this and this and this is disqualified. Pick one and hope you win. All right. Don't complicate life for me. So here's the ones I'm giving away. I'm giving away all the top handles. I'm giving away the X-Grip, the Velo Action Pro, the Revo, the DSLR rig, the Spider Stabilizer, the Fiutech, the whole thing, the, the carbon fiber grip plus the AK4000, which you can take out and use. If you take this out, it'll look like this. So it's, it's, a, it's a set. I'm giving that away as a set. I'm giving away the Zhiyun Crane 2. I'm keeping the Ronin SC. And I'm giving away the Red King Fly Cam plus the Galaxy as a set. This is a steady cam set. I am keeping the flow line and I'm keeping the Ronin SC. Basically, that's what, and I'm keeping the Ronin M. So I'm keeping this one, this one, and the Ronin SC. Everything else I'm giving away. Because I'm a nice guy. I want to share the joy of photography. Some people can't afford this stuff. So I'm passing it on because that's the right thing to do. So stay, uh, I'm going to announce the, we're going to announce the winners in the next video. We're going to give you a few days to pick which one you want. Send in your entry. Again, pick one thing. Now, most people are going to want the expensive stuff. Keep that in mind. You're going to be competing against everybody. If you don't, if this, I mean, come on, this is overkill for most people. If you're using a little tiny camera, this is ridiculous. I mean, don't go for the big stuff just because it's big and expensive. Go for what realistically you think is best for your scenario. Most of you have small little cameras and you're not doing big expensive things. So go for something that's on your level. Plus, the more expensive stuff, more people are going to ask for it. So the chances are, if you pick one of the cheaper things, you're, you'll be less people asking for it and more chances of you getting it. And Carol will also be picking the winner of her camera in the next video. So I hope this, uh, my photography channel inspires you because that's what it's all about. Sharing the joy of photography, that's all I'm about. And I try to show you everything that has to do with supporting the camera, lighting. I'm gonna get an audio series soon. Um, filmmaking, still photography, I just love it. That's what I'm about. I worked in Hollywood for 20 years and I'm sharing with you everything I've learned and I like to experiment and tinker. I'm rambling, I don't wanna make this too long, so I'll see you in the next video. Tell your friends about Marcus Fix. Marcus, Marcus Fix. I'll see you next video, okay, bye.